try to pull her up with the winch. Hurry, Dave. I've almost got it. Hey Monster Kids, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rich Savage, your host here at Monster Kid Studios. I just wanted to make a quick video today to talk about this guy I just got in the mail. You can see Creature from the Black Lagoon Lives. The first issue from Skybound and Universal Monsters. So this is officially endorsed here by Universal. This is uh, one of the variant covers that I also ordered. So I got this, I got these two. Now, there are a uh, buttload of variant covers, <laughs> which there seems to be of everything these days. Um, I never liked that gimmick. I still don't. Um, I thought that went, you know, by the wayside uh, a while ago, especially in the 90s when everything was a gimmick. There were variant covers. There were foil covers. There were, you know, die cut covers. I mean, it was just, it just got to be a mess. And I stopped collecting comics quite a while ago because it just seemed to be just a big uh, rip off and the quality wasn't that good and the prices are way too high. I mean this comic book is what $4.99 for one of these? $4.99. I don't know how many kids out there can afford to go to a comic book store and spend five dollars for one comic book and I guess that's why kids aren't buying them anymore. That's why they don't read them and that's why the industry is slowly dying or at least I feel that way um, as far as the major publishers are concerned. Now there's a lot there's a lot of independent publishers out there right now who are coming to the forefront, people who are selling their uh, comics online um, through crowdfunding and things like that. And uh, fortunately, that's a good thing because it's allowing a lot of independent creators to express themselves and get new product out there and things that um, we may have never even had the chance to see before. While these guys, uh, the big, big publishers like DC, Marvel, and uh, even Image um, sometimes drop the ball as far as quality is concerned and as far as um, what comic book fans want to see and read. Um, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, I've always been a fan. I'm a Universal Monsters fan, obviously. <laughs> so when this comic came out, I figured, you know what? I'm going to order a comic. I'm going to read it. And I've tried reading some other stuff, like Something's Killing the Children. And um, I try to keep up with some of the more um, horror-themed comics whenever I can. Uh, but I don't know. I'm, I'm disappointed in most of them. Most of the time, they seem like retreads or you know ideas that have already been you know, going over with a fine tooth comb and uh, no original stuff. So I bought these because I love the creature. So that's basically the long and short of it. Um, now, as I was saying, there's a crap ton of variant covers. There's three of them there. You saw the one I have on the left. And then there's the, uh, there's two other ones there. And then there's these guys and there's an Alex Ross cover as well that's the uh, Alex Ross version all the way on the right of course I mean if you're a comic book fan you know who Alex Ross is and you recognize it immediately the covers are beautiful no doubt about it they're all you know very unique in their own way um, but again you know the variant cover um, gimmick Come on, just just make some good comics and, and knock it off. I don't think it's fair for the uh, comic book distributors either. Uh, the uh, small shops out there. I have a friend, uh, JC, who runs a cop uh, comic book shop in Toledo, Toledo, Ohio, and he struggles with this stuff because some of the covers are in high demand. Um, the ones and they and you have to buy like it. They have to order like 200 copies of a comic book in order to get one special variant cover. And um, you know, the small shops they can't afford to and make that kind of investment for a comic book that may be sitting in their shop for God only knows how long, you know? So I feel bad for them in that respect. Um, here's some of the artwork, interior artwork for the new book. And the artwork is is pretty decent. I, I really don't have a problem with it. It's Matthew Roberts and Dave Stewart doing the colors, who's who does a beautiful job. Um, the writing is Dan Waters and Ram V, um, two people who've been around for a while. And the story itself is interesting. Um, apparently, Kate Marsden is a reporter and she's traumatized uh, 
because she was almost drowned to death by this serial killer, apparently, who was running around drowning people and, and their bodies are disappearing. And and um, I guess he's he murders by drowning. I, I, I guess that's what I was supposed to gather from this. His name is Darwin Collier, supposedly. He's the killer. And she's traumatized and has PTSD and she's drinking and smoking and popping pills and all that fun stuff that comes with, uh, you know, almost being murdered. <laughs> but she's on the hunt for the guy. She wants to stop him in his tracks. And she heads down to uh, Peru or some such place and on the hunt for this guy. And there's still bodies disappearing while she's there, people are disappearing, and the local villagers are attributing that to uh, the creature, who is a local legend that she thinks is a bunch of nonsense. So, uh, I don't want to give away too much of the story, but anyway, she uh, ends up out in the swamp land on the hunt for this killer, and um, she goes on this rant by her, all by herself out in the middle of the swamp about how horrible her life is. <laughs> and that's when Creech kind of makes his appearance. She gets spooked. She goes into the water and nearly drowns again. And at the end of the, the, end of the comic book, the very last page, we finally get to see the creature in all his glory, as, as can be expected. Um, as far as overall, eh, you know, it's pretty decent. The art's pretty decent. Um, the story's intriguing. I really don't like the protagonist very much. <laughs> she just, uh, there's something about her character that rubs you the wrong way. It's it's with most female characters these days in movies, comics, um, television shows. They're very masculine and very driven and very, um, I don't even know how to describe it, but they just, they just like, I don't know, they're a turnoff. I mean, like she's got all kinds of issues. So, um, I don't know. I'm sure her, you know, given time, if I read the comic, give it a fair shake, you know, we'll see what happens with her character arc and how she grows out of this or changes as a result of running into the creature and uh, maybe catching this killer. I have no idea where it's going to go, but um, like I said, I'm intrigued. I may continue to read it. Um, it takes a lot to keep my interest when it comes to this stuff. So uh, we'll see. But that's the latest in uh, the creature um of the Black Lagoon, Creature from the Black Lagoon's comic book history. This is the newest one, but the creature's been around for a long time when it comes to comics, periodicals, magazines. Um, he's been in Famous Monsters of Filmland. Uh, every time a magazine like Scary Monsters or uh, Classic Monsters uh, puts out a magazine, you know, they, they try to find a reason to put the creature on the cover because it always sells. Everybody loves the creature from the Black Lagoon. And um, he's got a huge fan following. So um, I went back to look at some appearances of creature or creature-like creatures <laughs> throughout the history of comics. And uh, I went all the way back here. This one's from 1954, Amazing Ghost Stories, number 14. So this is right around the height. This is the uh, when the creature first reached popularity. And you can see them in the swamp fighting off creature-like beings. Very cool cover. And then here we have House of Mystery from DC Comics. 1960, House of Mystery number 94. And you see, again, they're in the boat. And look, the creature in Echo Lake. They've hooked them. They've hooked creatures. This creature's wearing a swimsuit of some kind. <laughs> so that's from uh, 1960. And here we have Archie's pal Jughead. I, I had a chance to buy this once on eBay and blew it. And I've, I've really, I feel bad now because I could have gotten it for a song. Now the book's so expensive. If you want to get it in some decent shape, it's really hard to come by. Archie's Pal Jughead, number 79. This is from 1961. So, yeah, as you can see, hey, Creech, he's been around a long time. There's Jughead. Say, Ronnie, how, just how long has it been since you cleaned out your swimming pool? Ah! Well, you don't get that kind of humor anymore, kids. <laughs> this one's very popular. You can still get this one. Uh, there are quite a few copies of this out from Dell Comics, The Creature, number one from 1962. And uh, you can still find this on eBay on eBay at a decent price. Um, obviously, if you want a closer to mint copy, you're going to pay for it. But there's The Creature from 1962. 
and this is this one I found really interesting. Adventures of Jerry Lewis, number 87 from 1965. And there you see him with the mummy and a vampiro type woman here. And then there's Creech. He's back, the terrifying Tyke Renfrew and the kid who made monsters. And there's Jerry Lewis. What's amazing to me is the, the timing of it. 1965, Jerry, the Adventures of Jerry Lewis, there are 87 issues of this to this point. That's a, that's a lot. Nowadays, a comic book doesn't last more than like 10 or 12 issues before they reboot it. Jerry Lewis, he was around for 87 issues. <laughs> and here's another one that's very popular, Curtis uh, Publishing, the uh, Marvel line of comic, uh, mag comic magazines, uh, The Legion of Monsters. This one had Dracula, Frankenstein Monster, and this, this issue here, the first issue, was the premiere of the Manphibian. There he is. There's the Manphibian down there with Frank. So they created their own creature from the Black Lagoon for this magazine and called him the Manphibian. And more recently, we had the creature from the Black Lagoon here from Dark Horse from 1991. And the cover here was by Arthur Adams, a very popular artist, very famous artist. And um, yeah, that one looks pretty cool. I mean, the, the artwork looks great. I, I've never read this. I don't know what it looks like inside, but I'm sure if it's like most things, it's probably, you know, hodgepodge <laughs> of sloppy artwork. <laughs> You're going to have to forgive me, guys. I've, I'm, I'm from the Bronze Age and, and, and you know, the Silver Age, and I guess I was spoiled on uh, all the the uh, way that, um, especially Marvel Comics in the 60s, 70s, and even in, well into the 80s was very uh, a stickler for... Uh, detail continuity and um uh, stan lee didn't a lot a lot uh let a lot slip by or the editors of marvel at the time didn't a lot let a lot slip by that wasn't of uh the proper quality and um i mean i've seen things online where uh they were rejected covers for certain uh comic books back then that were much better than anything you could imagine uh, these days and you know Marvel's editorial staff would would reject them and make the artist do them over again and get it right the second time and sometimes when you see the rejected covers you're like oh my god what was wrong with that you know it's amazing but um, yeah so I guess uh, you know I don't want to be one of these guys it's like oh nothing's good anymore because that's not true I've read a lot of uh, manga that was really good and uh, there's there are some good comic books Jeff Lemire is uh, somebody I'm, I really like a lot so I don't just, uh, you know, poo-poo everything that's new. But, um, you know, like I said, I, you give me the good old-fashioned comic books that have, like, you know, the cost, you know, have 25 cents or 30 cents up in the corner, and I'm thrilled. You know, I could read those forever. I've got boxes of them here, so <laughs> that's my thing. But I'm going to give the creature a, sh a chance here. Here he is once more. Creature from the Black Lagoon Lives. I'm, I'm going to say if you haven't read it, check it out. I think it's worth a look. Um, like I said, the story's intriguing. The art is good. Um, I've complained about all I'm going to complain about right now. But uh, I think it's worth a shot. I think it's worth checking out. So there it is. Creature from the Black Lagoon Lives. And that's it for me for today. And I'll see you next time right here at Monster Kid Studios. Take it easy.